We're Mark and Lisa. We live off-grid and we work off-grid. Mark is a Victron Energy Ambassador. He travels the U.S. and trains dealers and installers on Victron equipment. Together we own off-grid solutions. We consult with people and guide them through the process of designing and installing their own system. Today we'll talk about one of our favorite projects and offer some ideas and tips for your next install. Okay, let's get started. First up is an overview of the site. Uh, this image was pulled off of Google Maps, and as we are working from Nebraska remotely, um, the customer is located in Colorado, we find this to be uh, the best way to to start uh, with the site assessment is to check out a Google Maps overview of the site and also working with someone local, uh, Johnny at Johnny Wise Solar and the customer. We determine the best placement of the solar array and the power shed. The power shed will be placed over the underground enclosure and will house the balance of systems. And we'll be talking a little bit more about that in just a little bit. We then perform a load analysis. And this is a spreadsheet that uh, we've worked on uh, that we use with our customers and also recommend that our installers uh, work with the customer uh, with the spreadsheet and it gives the customer a really good idea of uh, the potential of you know loads being turned on for how long and how that affects the battery capacity um, things like that so we have them fill this out so we filled one out for this uh, site and in the lower right hand corner is going to give us our kilowatt hours and from that we can base our battery size, and once we have our battery size and we know our loads, uh, we can uh, come up with the inverter charger size. And then we can, uh, from then, we can figure out how much solar that we need to use on a particular uh, project. Once we figure out how much solar is required, uh, the next step is to size a MPPT for it. So we use the Victron Energy uh, MPPT calculator. Uh, this is a really cool Excel spreadsheet where you can put the nominal voltage in, historic low temperatures, uh, things like that. We can put our module information in. And then what we came up with this, we wanted 12 modules. We had some 380 watt 72 cell modules that we had and so what we're going to do is uh, play around with uh, string and parallel and here we've came up that uh, we can do three strings of four with a uh, 250 70 MPPT controller. With this spreadsheet uh, our results are going to be in green, yellow, and red. So red is a no-go but uh, yellow is okay. It's just showing here that it's going to clip at 70 amps. Um, knowing that the Victron MPPTs are current limiting, but not voltage limiting. So oversizing the MPPT uh, is not a bad thing, um, especially under low light conditions. For the proposal process, we created images and diagrams to present to the customer here. We're showing what the below ground enclosure might look like. Um, most of our customers put a shed over the top, house a generator. I think this is probably the sixth uh, or seventh design we've done like this. The diagrams that we created in uh, Visio, um, here we're showing uh, the first round, uh, we were using a uh, battery combiner, but uh, we changed the design up to show the links power in. And uh, this is the final design. A couple of things were done prior to the on site installation. Um, this picture is uh, we're setting up to pre wire the two Quattro 5000s and VE panels as well as some of the monitoring equipment. The nice thing about pre-wiring things at the shop is that we can get all the conductors cut to length, uh, speeding up the time on site. So 
we're using three separate back plates for this project uh, somewhat like um, in the background of this picture this is somewhat of a different uh, setup this is a, a deployable system basically the same components but this is a, a plug-and-play using Anderson connections so we've got the um, three back plates for the primary follower and accessories panel and this is pretty nice uh, for NGOs and for people that want to get power up quickly basically once it's on the wall within 20 minutes we can have uh, we can be harvesting power and producing power and also as part of the uh, preparation for installation day uh, we worked with star precast out of parachute Colorado to design and fabricate our below ground enclosure they even went so far as putting in conduit uh, knockouts in all four corners for us uh, so we could bring in the PV and power out to the uh, to the house uh, we could also design uh, we chose a 24 inch by 36 inch personal access uh, to get into the below ground enclosure and to um, to get the equipment down there were six sections fabricated and assembled to make sure that they would fit and then those sections were transported and reassembled on site using a telehandler which you can see there in the background so here's some shots of uh, the below ground enclosure installed uh, they still need to backfill in the background here you can see the uh, mast for the uh, empty solar array that uh, we'll talk about next we're finally rolling up on site in Colorado with our trailer and all of our equipment and setting up our solar panels so that we can charge all of our power tools. So Johnny Weiss um, recommended that we try empty solar on this uh, project. So we used a top of pole 12 module array and I just can't say enough good things about how everything was packaged um, the parts you can tell that installers uh, designed or helped put this together because there's extra washers and nuts for people like me that drop uh, shiny washers in the snow and can't find them the installation of the uh, PV array on the MT solar mount um, took place over a number of days um, my friend Gabe Stevens from Black Canyon RE helped me out um, on the first uh, just kind of setting up things he helped me put things on the wall downstairs and uh, yeah shout out to Gabe I was lucky enough to have uh, Johnny Weiss stop by with some students from Solar Energy International SCI in Paonia Colorado my friend Kyle Bolger um, stopped by as well that day uh, Kyle was uh, one of my instructors back in 2008 when I went through all the classes at Solar Energy International. Thanks Kyle. Another nice aspect of the MT Solar system is that you're able to build the majority of it at waist or shoulder height. Um, there's an, a lifting adapter there on the top of the mast and a chain hoist so we can bring this up uh, after we populate it with all the modules except one and we can get it up to the height that we want and then transfer it and connect it to the mast the tilting mechanism is nice as well we can uh, adjust it so it's straight up and down or flat to help with the installation and post commissioning uh, we'll be able to tilt it a seasonal tilt let's say flat for the summertime or at an angle for winter production uh, like we said before uh, we had three strings of four uh, we used a PV6 combiner box so all of our wiring management is taken care of all the continuity checks check out now we're ready to go downstairs and hook up all that cool Victron stuff on our way downstairs we can see the inside of the shed that's over the top of our below ground enclosure there's a shot of uh, where the generator would be hooked up 
and a shot of our personal access hatch. So we've got everything on the wall. Again, thanks Gabe. Um, so what we're seeing here is our three back plates, three of the Discover AES 7.4 kilowatt hour batteries here that we're paralleling uh, all three of those into a Victron power in for overcurrent protection for each of the batteries we installed MRBF fuses to the positive terminal of each battery we used 150 amp fuses to cover our one aught cable after coming from the Lynx power in we ran our home runs to the primary and follower VE panel. On commissioning day, my friend Alex stopped by. We went through continuity checks. Alex checked my wire management. We programmed the system to be in closed loop. We also programmed the inverters to play well in dual phase or split phase. So here we are. Beautiful blue boxes on the wall, off-grid and grooving. In any off-grid living situation, energy-efficient appliances should be considered. Here they've installed an Energy Star refrigerator and also a mini split, which is very efficient for both cooling and heating. Now that we've completed our install, we can check out the VRM app, which is Victron's free remote monitoring app. You have so much information about your system with this app. You can see battery state of charge, energy consumption, how much power you're making, as well as how much you're consuming. Um, you can see at the bottom of the page historical data, which you can see uh, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. Um, so it's really nice to be able to see your history too. Um, and of course you can make changes to your settings as well. If you're an installer, this app is really helpful. Um, because you have the ability to set up your customers' systems individually so you can monitor them and then also troubleshoot possibly um, without having to go on site. So this app is really cool for both installers and end users as well. So that's our project from start to finish. I uh, hope you liked the video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, let us know in the comments below.